Today we'll be making a, another envelope junk journal using DL envelopes. I wanted to do something similar that I've done in another video, which I will link below where we made this envelope junk journal. And I will be using some avocado dyed papers and I'll show you the process that I used. And this is my next Digital Collage Club design team project. Welcome, this is Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So let's start off by showing you my avocado dyed papers of some of which I will be using in this project. So the first one I, the first thing I dyed was this cheesecloth. So it's a nice kind of salmon color i really like it maybe here in comparison this would be a coffee stained one and this is the avocado stained one so it does have a different hue to it i really like it then what i also did was i added some of my wild honey distress stain which is why you see these yellow pieces but i will show you how i did that so i did add some vinegar to my mixture this time to see if it would stain the papers more but actually that didn't help at all i know sometimes other crafters use white vinegar we, we i didn't have any white vinegar at home so i tried it with uh, rice vinegar and i don't think it made any difference so i still love the way these came out especially all these wild honey distress stain blobs so here's some envelopes i don't even know if you can see that these are pink and depending of course on your paper they will be more or less pink so these are a lot more pink for example these two envelopes and this is the a4 copy paper so again i love I love the the bits with the yellow. I like the combination, the pink and the yellow. And just to show you in comparison, I have here another batch that I did without using the vegan vinegar and actually using less skins. And I don't know how well you can tell on camera, but these are actually darker than these. So, yeah the vinegar didn't really do anything i really love these as well here i added some splashes of the avocado dye and i added into my spray bottle i added some ground espresso distress stain and then i just sprayed it on the drying paper so you get all these lovely splashes so i really love this one as well but they're very different and i guess each time you would do it you would get different result results which is a lot of fun i think <laughs> so let me now show you the process of how i avocado dyed first i wanted to show you this so i put a poll out on the community page on youtube and thank you so much for everybody who participated you can see here there were 407 participants and the vast majority 72 percent replied to my question have you ever tried avocado dyeing paper no but i'm curious about it 17 percent of you said yes i love the results and four percent said yes but i didn't really like the results so this is really helpful when you answer a poll that i put out because that tells me at what level i need to put the tutorial on like how deep do i need to go into a tutorial that i put out or is there interest in it at all so thank you again for participating okay so here i'm showing you the process so on the stove in a pot i added the remains of four avocados so you have four pits and eight halves of the avocado skins and i chose the ones that are dark on the outside and i scraped the inside 
the flesh out with a spoon as much as I could and then I just uh, set it on the stove to let it boil oh and I added three liters of water which is equivalent to 6.3 pints after 20 minutes it already started changing color and you can see the water was starting to get pink and you can also see from the avocado skins a lot of the dark color has um, has disappeared into the water I guess <laughs> and the pits have started to burst and the skin is starting to come off here so then I let it boil for about two hours and you can see here it is a much deeper red now and the pits have lost their skins completely and this is what the avocado skins look like now so there's hardly any color left then I took out all of the skins and the pits and I'm left with this liquid and you can see there are some bits of the avocado flesh still floating around inside so we need to get rid of those so I took a glass teapot that I have into which I'm going to be pouring this and I'm going to add a strainer on top of that and into that I'm going to put some cheesecloth to make sure that all the small bits will strain out so then I just poured all of that liquid in there and at this time it was already pretty much cooled off And you can see here all the bits that are left. And this is the juice that I'm left with. So now I took a clear like baking tray. I'm going to pour all of that inside. And I've watched a few avocado dyeing videos and on some of these they said it helps to add white vinegar so I didn't have white vinegar so I thought the closest thing to it that I have is rice vinegar Japanese rice vinegar that you use for making sushi and so I decided to try it because I thought it couldn't hurt and I added one tablespoon of that and mixed that up well This is only the second time I ever did avocado dyeing, so I'm by no means an expert in this. And I decided to dye this cheesecloth, which is the same one I used to strain the avocado with. So I'm just going to let it sit in there for just a few minutes. And then I came back to it and I took it out. And you can see the beautiful color it already has taken on. And I'll show you a comparison to the non-stained one, so you can really see the color change. Beautiful. And now I'm going to insert different types of paper into my liquid. So I have some, some uh, Rolex cards and some other game card, ephemera. These are some bits from your creative studio, from the stationery boxes, random papers. Then these are some file folder cards and some envelopes. And with the envelopes, I made sure that I opened them as well to make sure that the liquid also goes inside. And I also added some pieces of book page, different kinds. Mm -hmm. 
and also regular copy paper it's kind of too big for this <laughs> so I did some more of those later and so once everything was dyed here you see it laying on my on my uh, living room floor and as you probably will see here it doesn't look like it's dyed much at all some more than others some don't look like they have been dyed at all and I was worried that you wouldn't really see anything so what I like doing is I love adding my wild honey distress stain this unfortunately has been discontinued I think the distress stains in generally in general have been discontinued what a shame I love this stuff so much I have been able to find two more bottles in the UK so I'm waiting for those to arrive because I'm, I'm more than halfway through this bottle already so what I did was as, as you saw I just dabbed it onto the paper and then I sprayed some of the avocado dye that I had in the spray bottle mixed with a few drops of, of ground espresso distress stain and I just spritzed the spots to make them spread out a little bit more and so after I've done that to all of the papers that is what it looked like and I'm sorry for the bad lighting at this point and I know the colors look very strong at the moment but here you see once they're dry they have muted down a lot and I really like the effect So I'm starting off with three envelopes which are the same size. So these are the measurements. It's eight and five eighths long, four and a half inches <clears throat> wide. And then in centimeters, it's 22 centimeters long and 10.8 centimeters wide. And I believe these are the so-called DL sized envelopes they have a flap like this mine have a lining inside which is not necessary to have i actually took it out of one already because it's really hard to glue the flap in with that paper in there so what we're going to do is let me zoom you out a little bit we're going to glue the one flap into this envelope here so then we have this okay so we start off with this so I'm going to put glue on this flap here and I'm going to use the tacky glue Okay, so you want to make sure that your creases of the two envelopes are lined up so that when you fold them, they are pretty much lined up with each other. So that is the first part. Next, I want to get rid of these pieces here. I just want to have, I want to cut these straight so that we have um, straight openings. So I'm just going to cut these off and of course you could do that before you glue them into each other so I'm just cutting along the line here and I found my envelopes at my goodwill so I I'm not able to link these for you, unfortunately. I'm just making sure that I'm also cutting the tissue paper underneath. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other two flaps. That'll just make it easier to put anything inside to slide things in and out.
Okay, so now we have this. And with the third one, I'm also going to cut away these two bits here the same way. Maybe your envelope doesn't even have those, then you don't need to worry about it. Okay, so this one is going to be attached here so that we have like a trifold going on here and we're going to be inserting a signature in this crease and this is going to fold open. So we're just going to glue this flap here onto this other envelope. Yeah. So same thing, I'm just gonna put tacky glue on the flap. There's so many different versions of what you can do with these. I've, I've tried so many different ones. It's so much fun to experiment with these. You could also glue this on making a pocket underneath. Like if you don't glue this whole flap on, if you just glue it like this, of course, this could be a tuck spot as well or a pocket. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. Just making sure that these ends really line up here. Okay, so now we have a trifold. So one, and then this goes over. And since I plan on covering this part here, I am actually going to also tear out the tissue paper because that will just make gluing a lot more difficult. Obviously, if you don't have tissue paper inside yours, then don't worry about it. You should probably be more gently, more gentle if you do if you have to do this because I just tore my envelope a little bit, but that's okay. I will fix that later. So currently we have a pocket here, a pocket here. In the middle is going to be our signature, and we have a pocket here. And then when we close this. This is going to be our cover and on the back side we still need to glue down this flap here. Okay, got all that so now we need to think about how we're going to cover it because of course this is not going to stay a plain white envelope. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use partially some of my avocado dyed papers and maybe I will even use some of these. So these are two prints from the Digital Collage Club and I will list all the different kits and, and papers that I used from the Digital Collage Club. I'll, I'll list them in the description box. And I also wanted to give you some more information about the Digital Collage Club, which is membership based and you have thousands of royalty-free digital collage sheets, vintage graphics, scrapbook, scrapbooking, card making and digital craft supplies, you get instant access and all images are created especially for this club. Each week new images are added and you can sell whatever items you create with these images and there are also no download limits. And they even have craft project tutorials. 
So you can either get an annual access or lifetime access and with the link and coupon codes below you can get a $5 discount for the annual membership and a $10 discount for the lifetime membership. And so for this particular project I was searching for floral images. This what you see here is the latest addition to the floral images and I will be using some of these in part two and here you can see all the variations they have so I think there's something for everyone's style here what I love about it is that you don't have to pay for every download but once you have access you can just download to your heart's desire you can mix up so many different kits you're not limited in any way and you can see here there are 14 pages with floral images so here's some more tags or, or journaling cards. Just beautiful what Tina creates. These here, this one and the next one I'm going to show you are the ones I'm using for the base of the envelope. So this is one that I printed on my avocado dyed paper. So it's called the Vintage Rose Collection. I will mention that again in the description box. And this is the Victorian Rose Image Collection, which I used also on the inside. So the other one I used on the outside, I'm going to use on the outside cover and this one is used on the inside. So I was thinking maybe, but I don't know if that would be too much to use these also to cover part of the journal. Maybe on the outside is better. So I need to think about that. So on the inside, I think I'm going to start off by covering this part here with one of these. Fortunately, it's too long to go this way, so I'm going to have to cut it here. So here, I'm just going to mark a, a tiny, tiny bit smaller than the size I need. So I'm trying to cover this, just the left pocket for now. So gonna see how wide it needs to be and that's gonna vary on what type of envelope you have because I think there's a lot of different ones even if they're the same size I think they still are different on the inside okay and actually I can use the same measurement for this pocket here because that's gonna be the same so I'm gonna cut two of these and then I'll be back so I've Cut, cut these two and I've also inked them up with the tea dye. I didn't want it to be too dark, so I didn't want to use vintage photo. So these are gonna go on these two sides. And before I mount these, I'm going to go around the edges of this envelope as well with the tea dye distress oxide. I don't want any white peeking through. Okay, so I've inked up all the edges. And if you have, like on your envelope, a lot of times on the corners here, it's not glued down properly. So I'm going to glue those down as well before I glue my paper down. I'm also going to fix 
the tear here with some masking tape that I have gone over with some, I think, distress stain. Alright, so now I'm ready to glue these two down and I'm going to do this with my 3-in-1 glue because if I use the tacky glue for this, it's going to warp and I really don't like the warping. Okay, we've got the sides ready. Now I want to cover this bit here, of course, as well. And I'm thinking for this one, maybe I will use one of these two prints. Maybe this one here. And for this one, I want to make sure it goes inside as well because you will be able to see inside. So I want to make sure to cover that as well. So I'm going to cover the whole length up until the end of the pocket. So I just need to see where that is exactly. And then again, measuring the height just a tiny bit smaller than the actual height. So I will cut that down, ink it up and be back. So I, again, I've also inked up the edges around here. I've glued down the envelope corners here that always are not glued so well, just like we did on the outsides. And I've inked up the edges here. So I'm going to again use my three-in-one glue to glue this into the envelope. I'm going to slide this in here. And then just press it down. Take my bone folder, make sure it's glued well all the way till the end. Okay, so this is what we have so far. We have our three pockets. And then I also want to use my cheesecloth to just put a strip here where the signature is going to go. Did I do that here? Yeah, I did that on this one as well. So as you can see, I have some cheesecloth here where the signature is. I kind of like that look that of course is optional, but I do like that look a lot. This is a kind of cheesecloth that you can't really tear, unfortunately, but I will link one down in the description box for you that is easier to tear. I do want it peeking out a little bit on top on and on the bottom of the journal. Gonna take my three in one glue and just run that along the spine or along the crease and on both sides a little bit. And 
then glue my strip on here. So for the outside, we also need to find some paper. So this is going to be my cover. And I think I'm gonna use this printout. So the, this is a printout on the avocado dyed paper again. And I think I wanna just use this part here for my cover. I think these are so pretty. Also think about, no, don't wanna do that, no. So again, I'm just gonna measure it to be a little smaller than the envelope. And oh yeah, and as you've seen, I've already gone ahead and inked all around the outside edges as well. So I will cut this and ink it and then glue it on the cover. So there's our cover. I really like it. I do think I will I will uh, make an, a flap or something around it like I did with this one. Um, but I still need to decide what to put on there and how to do that. So I will do that later. So now what's left to cover are these two sides here. So I've decided to keep these plain. So I just cut two pieces out of my plain avocado dyed paper and I will glue those on. Okay, so now we have everything covered. So this is starting to look really nice and vintage. Really like this. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna add some half circles in for all three of my envelope pockets. Usually I would eyeball where to make these, but since we're gonna have three showing at the same time, I think they need to be pretty much exactly in the same height so this time I am actually going to measure where the middle is and then mark where to put them so. okay and they all lined up nicely so that's awesome so I'm just gonna erase these marks and then ink around these half circles. And the last thing I'm gonna do in this part one of the tutorial is the outside flap to go around here so that we can close it. So I have cut up a piece of my beige marble cardstock. This is 200 GSM and um, this is going to be wrapped around and this is where I'm gonna put my hole to then put the closer, closure just like I've done with this one here. And if you want to know the measurements for this piece, it's six and a quarter by four and a quarter inches. And I will now stick this onto my avocado dyed paper. And then I'll cut this out. The cardstock is just to make it more sturdy. 
and I'm going to ink, ink around the edges. And on the inside as well, because you're gonna be able to open that flap, so they need to be inked there as well. And then I'm gonna fold it in half. Ink up the crease. So that is going to wrap around here. And now I need an image to go on top of this. And I'm thinking either maybe this one here or even one of these beautiful floral bingo cards. This one would work as well, really well. So I will cut both of those out and then see which one I like better. Okay, so I've cut both of these out. So you can see they're actually the same flower but with different backgrounds. So this, and I think I'd put it in a bit slanted. So that's this one. Of course, they're not inked up yet. And the other one would be this one. And I actually think I prefer the bingo card because there's more contrast. Yeah, I like this one better for this. And I will also add some of my avocado dyed cheesecloth underneath that. But I think before I do all of that, I'm going to actually sew this with my sewing machine just right along here with a straight stitch. If you don't have a sewing machine and you want to do this, I suggest you actually hand sew it because gluing it, I mean, you, I guess you could also glue it. Why not? You could glue right on the spine here. You could try that as well. I, I haven't tried that. Okay, so I'll go do that and then be back. Okay, I've sewn it, sewn it along here. You can see with some bright pink thread. You can see it here as well, but that's gonna be covered up with the signature. And now I already cut the cheesecloth to be a little bit bigger than the bingo card, and that's gonna go like this. So I am going to glue that down. So now I'm going to make the hole with my crocodile. I'm using the bigger hole. I'm gonna put it in the corner. And then I'm going to take a rose gold eyelet. And put that through. Okay, and now we just need some twine to put around it. I'm going to use this, I don't know what you call this. This is, you know, what you use for packaging for mail. <laughs> so I'm just going to string that through and then wrap it around once. And then tie a bow. And then maybe leave a little bit longer tail in case it grows a little bit because it is still going to get the signature and some other pockets and ephemera. All right, so that's as far as we got in our part one. And in the part two, 
we're going to be adding some embellishments and of course adding the signature and maybe adding some more like clip out things and of course we have to fill our pockets and everything so there's going to be a lot more going on in this but i think it's a very good start to our little project so hope to see you back in uh, three days when i'll have the next video up with the part two thank you so much for watching please subscribe if you haven't if you want to see more and hit that like button if you enjoyed it thank you bye